Good morning. Veterans and patriots, welcome to Memorial Day Hudsonville Service 2023. I think this is the seventh Memorial Day I've serviced the uh, city with. Um, there was one that I missed, uh, that we all missed, and that was uh, during COVID. We had to cancel that uh, service. I was heartbroken. But uh, I took the day and went to the National Cemetery at Battle Creek. And if you've never been to a National Cemetery on a holiday like Fourth of July or Memorial Day, it's, it's very moving. Uh, I went to Nye, I wept. I visited a lot of graves of veterans I didn't know, but I could just imagine the life they had lived and the service they had given their country. Momentarily, we will be posting the colors. Veterans, you may salute. You can follow me when saluting. And if you are able, please stand. Post the colors.
Please be seated. I'd like to thank the Voices of Freedom for that uh, stunning singing of the national anthem. At this time, I'd like to call up uh, my friend, Pastor Mark Buslag, for the uh, invocation. Pastor. Thank you. Let's pray together, please. Father, we gather here today in your presence and we recognize you as the giver of all good gifts. We thank you for this place where we live. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy, the freedoms that enable us to freely speak of you and to tell others of your son, Jesus. We realize that this freedom is not free. And today, we stop to recognize and remember this fact. We thank you for the wall behind us that reminds us of all of those who have passed on. We thank you for the memories that we have. And we honor those memories and the legacies of those who have died serving our country, protecting our freedoms and our welfare for your glory. May we see these gifts as a part of our own stewardship today. May we steward them well for your glory. And as we honor the memories and legacies of those who have laid down their lives and paid that ultimate price, may we not forget that all of these things are rich gifts from you. Father, we ask for your blessing upon this time today. We pray for all of those who will follow today, who will speak, sing, encourage, and motivate us. May your blessing be upon them all, and may you be glorified as a result of our gathering today. In the strong and powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. I wandered through about a half dozen churches this last couple of years and finally arrived at the Jenison Bible Church in Jenison. And uh, Mark has been very welcoming and sticks to the gospel, which isn't always the case in some churches. So, Pastor, thank you for, thank you for the nice prayer. You maybe didn't notice when you came in here, there is a vintage World War I howitzer in the park. It's been here for, gosh, at least 30 years. I don't have a memory back that far. I know there's a couple old commissioners here that might know when. 
It was recently taken into the Department of Public Works and restored. They did a wonderful job, did a little bit of research on the, uh, the piece. It's a small artillery piece from World War I. It's a disassembled piece that can be taken into the battle easily on horses or mules. And it was restored and redisplayed out here, oh, about two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. I took a picture of that and sent it to a friend out in the East Coast, uh, a real good friend of mine from the service. And I said, our instrument of death has been now restored appropriately. That was probably not the best words I chose because he immediately corrected me and said, Mark, that's not an instrument of death. It's an instrument of deterrence and peace. We can say the same thing about any Navy ship, any rifle, any cargo plane that flies or stands in protection of our country. Those are instruments of peace and sometimes I think we sometimes get a little confused. We could say the same thing about veterans to a certain degree. Veterans are instruments of peace. They are the deterrence we have standing for our freedoms and liberty. At this time, I'd like to recognize State Senator Brad Slaw. Brad is a, uh, our representative for in the state legislature. Brad has been a sponsor of some uh, legislation giving veterans a break on their registration fees. He also serves on the um, Committee for Appropriations for Veterans and Law Enforcement. So Brad, if you're here, uh, please come up and share a few words from uh, the perspective of the state. I'm really grateful that I can be a part of this remembrance service today and I would welcome you as well as everybody else um, on this Memorial Day. Um, our nation seems divided today, focused on differences, focused on how can we confront each other rather than on our similarities. But days like today, where you folks are gathered um, and come together as Americans, that's the time that we can start having some hope because we are a nation, a great nation. Um, there's several pieces of history as I just spent time thinking about what did I say to you uh, this morning. Uh, I didn't really realize that this went all the way back to 1868 um, and was a decoration day. I, I love the wreath. It was a great thing as part as I thought about the decorating of the tombs of our soldiers from the Civil War. It took two world wars after that before we really understood that, no, it's not just about the Civil War, but let's celebrate for all folks who have died, giving that ultimate sacrifice for us. And I'm excited to be here because of those kind of sacrifices. A hundred plus years after that first Decoration Day um, that we had in 1868, Congress um, actually made a holiday, a federal holiday, which became Memorial Day, the last Monday of the month of May every year. Our Census Bureau says that there's a million people that have died in the service, protecting us, providing for our country, being that, that wall that separates um, the evil from the good. And so um, we just are, are grateful for that million people who have died in, in uh, the sacrifice for themselves, given that, that greatest um, level of service. In 2000, Congress created a special, um, I guess, uh, well, whatever. They created a special thing. President signed it. It's called the National Moment of Remembrance. Um, and it's the request in that remembrance was that every American stop for one minute, one minute, at 3 p.m. local time. So whatever your time, wherever you're at, 3 p.m. local time, we're supposed to stop as an act of national unity and just think for one minute of what these folks have done for us in giving their all. And I hope like you, like me, when we understand history and the relevance of that, and it actually gives them a greater reverence to this day, to our time together. And I'd encourage you that in spite of the flaws, in spite of the blemishes that we have as a nation, that we are still the greatest nation on the planet. And we need to continue to encourage everyone to understand why uh, we're here. And um, in large measure, we need to understand that it's because of that one million people 
one million strong who have, and more, who have given their ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms, for our nation, that we are still the shining city on a hill. I'd ask um, a blessing over you on this Memorial Day, and I'd ask that God bless America. Thank you, Brad. This time I'd like to ask uh, my friend Peter Dykow to come forward. Uh, Peter is the local legislative aide to Senator Peters. Senator Peters has done remarkable things uh, for veterans. He sponsored, co-sponsored the um, recent PACT Act that made uh, more than three million more veterans eligible for veterans affairs disability claims. Uh, as you probably know, a lot of the veterans that have come back from Iraq and Afghanistan have suffered with uh, quite a few, mostly chemical exposures from the burn pits. So I'd like to thank uh, Senator Peters for his strong advocacy for veterans. And at this time, Peter would like to uh, say a few words from the Senator. Thank you very much, Mayor, and thank you all for being here on this beautiful Monday morning. The Senator, sorry he couldn't be here in person, but he wanted me to read this message to you today. As we get together with friends and family to enjoy the holiday, I encourage everyone to pause, reflect on the significance of this day, and pay tribute to the generations of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who have served our nation with bravery and unwavering patriotism. Memorial Day, first and foremost, is a day of remembrance. It's a time to honor those who died in service to our nation and their fellow countrymen. It's a time to thank the brave men and women who have served in uniform and still carry the physical and mental scars of war. It's a time to appreciate the peace and security we enjoy thanks to those who sacrificed on our behalf. And it's a time to support our Gold Star families and remember the continued burden that they carry in the absence of their loved ones, not only on this Memorial Day, but throughout the entire year. We can never repay the debt of their sacrifice to defend our country and values as Americans, but we can honor their service by carrying on their legacy and their honor. So as we get together with friends and family to enjoy this holiday, I encourage everyone to pause, reflect on the significance of this day, and pay tribute to the generations of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who have served our nation with bravery and unwavering patriotism. God bless all those who have served. God bless all of those currently serving. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Peter. I think that's, uh, what, our seventh or eighth time, Peter, that you've uh, attended one of these events, so thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker. Uh, my friend, uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Tillier, is retired from the U.S. Army. He's a 1989 graduate of West Point. And I might note that we had our first woman give a uh, commencement speech at, the West, at West Point, so we should we should recognize and rejoice in that, that, uh, that a woman actually gave the, uh, the commencement speech. Uh, John is uh, president of a firm in uh, Grand Rapids, Jetco Solution, that works with companies trying to uh, obtain government contracts. Uh, John was, uh, like I said, a West Point graduate in 1989. In 1990-91, he was a young lieutenant at the tip of the spear going into Iraq. And uh, he hasn't shared all his stories with me, but I know he has nearly 100 jumps. Uh, he said that on his last jump as a battalion commander, company, company commander, uh, jumping out of a dark plane on a dark night with all his men out there on the, on the ground, trying to ask himself okay, how much more could he, how many, how many more measures he could dedicate to his country. So John is going to speak here briefly about uh, some of his experiences, and we're very appreciative. John, thank you.
Mayor, thank, thank you. you. Um, I've never been uh, referred to as an instrument, <laughs> but I kind of like that reference. Um, good morning. Mayor Northrup, elected officials, veterans, uh, Jason Allen, who's the uh, civilian aid secretary of the Army, friends and neighbors, uh, good morning and thank you for the kind words. My name is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Retired John Tellier, and uh, as, uh, as the mayor mentioned, I spent over 20 years in the service, uh, mostly as an uh, airborne ranger paratrooper. And uh, uh, on some of these days, I do feel some of those parachute jumps. It is indeed an honor to stand before you today and provide some brief remarks on such a reverend occasion. It's not very often that I get the opportunity to wear my uniform and to shine my jump boots. I felt it was important to understand the origin of this holiday. As I prepared for today's remarks, I learned that the, the Civil War, which ended in the spring of, excuse me, 1865, claimed more lives than any conflict in the U.S. history and required the establishment of the country's first national cemeteries. By the late 1860s, Americans in various towns and cities had begun holding springtime tributes to these countless fallen soldiers, decorating their graves with flowers and reciting prayers. And as earlier mentioned, on uh, May 5th, 1868, General John Logan, who was a leader of an organization for Northern Civil War veterans, called for a nationwide day of remembrance. The 30th of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in the defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet, churchyard in the land he proclaimed the date of Decoration Day, as he called it, was chosen because it wasn't the anniversary of any particular battle. Memorial Day, as decoration gradually became known, originally honored only those lost fighting in the Civil War, but during World War I, the United States found itself embroiled in another major conflict. And the holiday evolved to commemorate American personnel who died in all wars, including World War I, to the Vietnam War, the Korean War, and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Today we have a distinct, excuse me, a distinct pleasure of recognizing one of our veterans called on to serve many years ago. So I would ask uh, if uh, Peter Dickow and uh, Pastor Mark will join me as along with his son Jeremiah on the stage, please. So the story is I'm told. The date is July 29th, 1967. The Vietnam War was hot and heavy. The tip of our spear was the most powerful national asset in the U.S. arsenal. The aircraft carrier, the USS Forrestal. She was in the China Sea launching waves of attacks into Vietnam in support of American ground troops fighting. Naval aviator, Lieutenant John Mostrom, had just landed his A-3 jet bomber on the deck of the Forsell, having completed a mission in Vietnam. He was the last to land as a carrier had readied an attack squadron of A-4 jets. The fueled up A-4s were loaded with unstable Korean era 20-year-old bombs and their missiles were prone to electrical issues, which could cause spontaneous launch. The deck of the carrier was so crowded with plane that John's plane, Number 138909 was parked with the tail hanging over the apt end of the aircraft carrier. The deck of the carrier could not be any busier or crowded. It was war, it was hectic, it was dangerous. His plane was later the front page to Life magazine in August 1967. 
as John stood on the deck of the carrier, relaxing after his combat mission, doing a debrief with his wingman, there was a spurious missile launch from an A-4 that hit the planes in front of him. Nearly immediately, bombs cooked off and fuel spilled on the deck. John watched in horror, seeing several comrades and friends being killed immediately. Sailors being blown up and burned alive in front of him, including many friends. John himself was blown up, trapped below deck, saved only by his flight helmet, which was still on his head. As the ship became nearly fully inflamed, John found himself struggling with his duty and desire to assist in some way. In the panic and horror of it, John found himself taking a leadership role in recovering some of the killed sailors. 134 soldiers, and, excuse me, 134 sailors perished that day. John didn't have to assist for he was only an air crew, but nonetheless, God called him to see these sailors who were recovered with compassion and respect so their loved ones could mourn. John, along with those families, still mourn their passing. Thank you, John. Peter, would you please read the certificate from Senator Peters? Thank you. This is a certificate of special senatorial recognition presented to Lieutenant John Mostrom, United States Navy, in recognition of your heroic and selfless actions above and beyond the line of duty on board the USS Forrestal on July 29, 1967. Thank you. Pastor, would you be so kind as to offer us a prayer for John and all those who were lost on the forest all that day? Let us pray together, please. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to honor John and his example of selflessness, service, and love beyond what anyone would ever expect of him. We thank you for the example that this is to everyone who is here. Help us to emulate this kind of concern and love for our fellow man, for our neighbors, our friends, our family, and may you be glorified in this. We thank you for the opportunity to give honor where honor is due today. And we pray that this will serve as an example to all of us to conduct our lives in the most honorable way. And Father, we pause for a moment here today to remember the sailors who did not survive that horrific day. We thank you for their willingness to be where they were at that moment, putting themselves in harm's way while not even really understanding just how harmful the situation was going to be. Thank you for their vigilance, their faithfulness, and their service. And in memoriam, may those qualities challenge and motivate us all today to live our lives in such a way to make the largest contribution possible so that you ultimately will be glorified. Again, we thank you for this opportunity. May we remember it well. May it serve us well. And may you be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Like John Mostrom, myself, and many others sitting in the audience, we come back home and try to get on with life and family. Many do, but a few do not. Recently, a friend, combat veteran, committed suicide. He was unable to overcome the mental anguish from his time spent in conflict in Afghanistan. He left behind a lovely wife and two beautiful daughters. Their lives were forever changed and left questioning whether or not they could have done something. He was one of 22 veterans that met the same fate. 
June 22nd, 2022. The VA reported 6,146 veteran suicides in 2020. It's a staggering number. I ask that you reach out to a veteran, let them know you care. Let them know there are resources such as Stop Soldier Suicide and Children of the Fallen Patriots, which are a couple that, uh, that I support. And remind them that their presence here is much better than the alternative they may be contemplating. Today is a day to honor those who have sacrificed, remember those who have served and defended our way of life so that we may enjoy our freedom, liberty, and pursuit of prosperity. Let us not forget and forever be diligent. God bless America. Thank you. Momentarily, we'll be closing the service. Uh, the service is completed at TAPS. Uh, once again, I want to thank John for his steering words and reminding us of all those veterans here and not here and those that are still here often need help and we have an obligation to them. Would everybody please stand? Veterans, you may hand salute. Seth, commence steps. <laughs> 